All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Allie. I am the Senior Director of Commercial Strategy here at Fora, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about our destination debrief of Hawaii. Hawaii holds a very special place in my heart. I have been there many, many times. I have friends that live on the islands, close relatives, as well as family friends, and have been going since I was a very small girl with my family. So I've been able to experience Hawaii in a multitude of different ways from going as a young kid, going with my family, going with girls trips. So I've been able to have a variety of different experiences on the island in a variety of different ways. So looking forward to being able to share that all with you and give you some insider tips, recommendations, things to know about. Okay. So why Hawaii and who should visit? Whether you love the beaches or you are an adventure seeker or you are just someone who wants to lay down and read a book, Hawaii is amazing for all of those things. Hawaii also is an amazing island for food and tasting the flavors of Hawaiian cuisine. So when to visit? There's really no bad time to visit Hawaii. Special times, though, to visit Hawaii, though, are January through March because it is whale watching season and the winter months are the best for big wave surfing. June, July, August, very peak seasons just given summer vacations for families. And then December is also a very busy, busy month just given the holidays. And it tends to have the best weather. In terms of length of stay, so I always like to say five to 10 days is ideal. You can do shorter trips, especially if you're coming from the West Coast and you want to do a four-day trip, totally doable because it's a five-ish hour flight. But I have clients that I've sent from New York and I'm like, you guys got to do it for like seven-ish days plus because it's such a long journey to get there. So it really depends on where they're coming from. But I always like to say five to 10. You could always do longer as well. Um, because there is so much to do and see. So I want to also talk a little bit about island hopping because when we like talk about the the length of stay, people are like, I want to go to every island and I only have five days. I'm like, you kind of can't really do that because you're not going to really see the island itself as well as get a real true sense of place for all of them. So whether you're wanting to do multiple days, we can talk about like what's good for what. If you're just starting off and you've never been to Hawaii, then probably going to Oahu or maybe Maui is your best bet. Personally, I love the big island. So making sure, though, that you also have sufficient time on each island is really important so that you can immerse yourself and relax and enjoy the Hawaiian spirit. So that's why I always say recommending at least five days. Again, you could do three and then hop, hop to another island. But when you think about if you're wanting to go island hopping, 10 to 12 days, you really need that if you want to see about two-ish islands. The other thing to note, too, is about getting here. So there's major airports at all of the islands. So there's the Honolulu International Airport, which is on Oahu. We also have the Maui Airport. There's Kona, which is on the big island. And then there's also Hilo, which is your, your airport on the big island. So there are two airports there. We also have Kauai, and Kauai has an airport, too. Now, the population, there's about 1.4 million people. From a car perspective, highly recommend a car, just given you are going to be wanting to drive. You can do Ubers and Lyfts, but like I said, you really, really want a car to be able to explore everything. So let's talk about recommended hotels. What's new? A couple of new and upcoming things for everyone to note too. The Mauna Kea Beach Hotel, which is an autograph hotel, is currently in remodeling right now, and that sits on the big island too. And then we also have Rosewood Kona Village, which has just been opened. And I was actually just there, fortunately, in January to take a visit, also on the Big Island. And it is absolutely stunning. And we'll dive into it a little bit later. So let's talk about the Big Island and what it's known for. So the Big Island, like I said, it has two different airports. It has the one in Kona and the one in Hilo. It's known for coffee farms, a wide variety of restaurants, the volcano as well, which is an active volcano that you can go do helicopter rides. You can also go hiking. The elevation actually on the Big Island is extreme. And so you can go through a variety of different ecosystems when you are hiking at a very short and within a very short elevation time frame. So this island is wonderful if you are an adventure seeker or you want people to go and experience something a little bit different. So whether you are a family just looking for relaxation, if you're looking for cultural exploration or outdoors, 
It's great for couples as well. Travelers love to go snorkeling, hiking. You can go see some manta rays and do a dive, actually, which is very, very cool that um, the Four Seasons gives you as an experience. So what to do, like I mentioned, you know, you can go see the crater. There is a Kona Cloud Forest Sanctuary, which I didn't get to do when I was there, but I had some friends go and experience it, and they said it was phenomenal. Like I said, this is the hike that you can do at a variety of different elevations and see a variety of different kind of ecosystems that feel like you are going from one place to another. Talked a little bit about helicopter tours. Um, So this is also another way to see the active volcano. Snorkeling, there's tons of different coves throughout the island that you can go snorkeling as well as scuba diving where to eat and drink. So there's lots of different places. These are a few of my favorites. The canoe house at the Monolani property is personally one of my favorites. My biggest hack for people is go early, sit down. They have a beautiful expansive grass area with fire pits. Grab a drink, sit down, enjoy it with your family or your loved one and watch the sunset and then go in and have dinner. So that leads me into the Monolani. There are a variety of different hotels that sit on a strip of the big island off of uh, Kona. And so the Monolani, it has a new, probably within the last two years now, a new remodel. The rooms are so bright and so airy and so open and inviting. I absolutely love staying in these hotels. They have two pools, one for adults, one for families. It has a wonderful beach cove. They have three different restaurants on property as well. So a couple of other things about the property to note, it's wonderful for families. It's also wonderful for couples. It's not a really big property, like it does have a spa. It also has pickleball and tennis courts. It is connected to a golf course as well. It's not a super expansive property, which is actually personally what I love because if you have young, if you are a family and they have young kids or they have babies, what's nice is you actually can feel like you can walk quickly to back to your rooms and it's not going to take you 10 minutes. And that's personally something that I love to share with a lot of new families. Let's talk about Kona Village and the new Rosewood. So this is a super special property. It was destroyed with the hurricanes a couple of years ago, and it is a completely new build. So they have really restored the area of the hotel to be a true sanctuary. It is perfect for multi-generational families because all of the rooms, there are two to four bedroom suites that are all connected. All of the rooms, though, it is not connected by one single Um, building. Every single room is a standalone building. So what's nice is you really get that privacy, which is why it's also wonderful for couples. Every room, I like to say, has a lanai. So you can see it here in the picture. This one is connected for an oceanfront, I believe it's a two-bedroom suite, but even the one-bedroom suites, which are entry-level category rooms, they all have these lanais. And so you will always have an outdoor space that you can enjoy You can have your coffee out there. You can order room service. It's a a lot more private of a hotel than the other ones that we're going to mention. There are, again, two pools. There are also three restaurants on the property. The spa is fantastic, I must say. It is probably one of my favorite spa experiences that I've had across all of the Hawaiian islands. It is a bit bigger than Manolani, I would say, but what's nice is they actually give you bikes so that you can bike around and they are really fun to do. They also have little uh, buggies that can take you to and from. The programming as well that they have on the property is fantastic. They have pickleball, they have indoor outdoor gyms, they have a tennis court. Um, So they have a lot of things that you can do on the property as well. They do have a little cove that is access to the beach as well. And they have a little bit of a beach club. I forgot to mention with the Manolani, they also have a cove for their beach. Now let's talk about the Four Seasons Halalai. Beautiful, beautiful property as well. This is a lot bigger of a property. There are four pools. And what how it's set up is each pool, there is the rooms are kind of surrounded by the pools. So what's nice and something to note is when you are booking each pool, there's a family friendly one, there's a kids one, there's an adults only one. Um, It recently had a multi-million dollar renovation about two years ago. So the rooms do have a modern, more updated feel. And there again are a wide variety of activities. So they do have a golf course, they have a tennis courts. um, They also have a wonderful spa as well. Their food is fantastic. They have three restaurants on property. All right, 
Mauna Kea Beach Hotel, I mentioned this previously, they are going through a renovation right now. So I'm going to quickly jump over this, but this is going to be a really wonderful new property probably coming out in 2025. So just so you guys all know, they have a really great golf course that personally my father loves to go to. And the hotel also has three restaurants, lots of special events, lots of weddings that take place here too. So if you have people that are like, I want to get married in Hawaii, the Mauna Kea Beach Club Hotel is wonderful for that. And they are really best suited for weddings. Let's talk about Oahu and Lanai. So with Oahu, this is the island for the capital as well, Honolulu. Honolulu is fantastic. If you have never been, Waikiki, really wonderful, lots of history and culture that happen there. And then what I personally love about for Oahu is the North Shore. So the North Shore is highlighted by Pipe Masters. Um, so if you are a big surfer or you have people that are big surf, surf enthusiasts, Pipe Masters takes place between January and February every single year. Um, it's great for, again, surfing adventures, first-time visitors, families, and those seeking a diverse island culture because with Oahu, I always suggest people to go to two different places within Oahu. So whether you want to start in Waikiki and then go to the North Shore or you want to go to another part of the island, maybe Kailua or Lanikai, it is great for being able to go to two different places. So what to see and do here, like I mentioned, lots of different things. You can go to the Mauna Wheelie Falls. There's a botanical garden that you can experience, eat and drink. One of my favorite things on the North Shore and also in Waikiki is Sunrise Shack. Best acai bowls, hands down. I still dream about them and I think about them all the time. And then a variety of other restaurants like I've suggested here. Okay, so let's start with Turtle Bay in the North Shore and then I'll get to Waikiki. So Turtle Bay, for those that might not be familiar, and I'm going to make a funny joke, it actually is become famous for being where Forgetting Sarah Marshall was filmed. But the North Shore is wonderful, like I said, for long strips of white sand beaches, wonderful for surfing. You can actually go out and surf. You can, they have surf rentals for you and you can go out there surfing. You can take surf lessons too, or you can just drive five minutes and go to the beach. So Turtle Bay is one of my personal favorite properties. Got a renovation last year. It was a $500 million renovation. It's a beautiful property that sits on the North Shore of Oahu. And that property is the only, the only like true resort on that side of the island. It has a new spa, I believe two to three restaurants. It sits on a wonderful long strip of land. So that's why I always encourage people to get the cars because then from that, they can also drive to the different beaches, enjoy the properties and enjoy surfing. What's also wonderful is like I said, their Sunrise Shack, which is right across the street. Their concierge team is fantastic. Okay, so the Four Seasons Oahu at Koalina. This is perfect for families, for golfers, for wellness enthusiasts. It sits on the, if you were looking at Honolulu, it sits on the west side of the island. It is great because guests can enjoy five different restaurants. There is a spa um, and it is very, very family friendly. So I highly encourage people when they are wanting to go here, if they want a little bit of a different vibe um, and they don't want to make it all the way out to the North Shore, this is a great alternative option pairing it with Waikiki. To add to that, the Disney Resort is actually right across the street from this Four Seasons. So it is wonderful. There is a, it's a whole island themed decor, water features, activities, ukulele lessons, outdoor Disney movie nights. So it is a really fun filled retreat for guests of all ages. So jumping into Waikiki, the Royal Hawaiian is a luxury collection resort, ideal for travelers that are seeking for a blend of luxury and local charm. Um, it is a Marriott property. It sits right on the beach as well. So you will have beachfront access. Then we have the Moana Surfrider. This is one of the longest standing hotels on Waikiki. Again, it is also a Marriott property, ideal for travelers seeking for that blend of historic charm and modern luxury. Lots of different room options and variations. So again, great for multi-generational families, connecting rooms, things of that nature. And it also sits right on the beach. We have this new property, actually, the Aloha Hilani Resort and Waikiki Beach. It is new, modern, fresh. It is a real beachfront retreat, which offers amenities that you can have from a, like a more serene escape. It's a little bit different than all of the more traditional style and decor of the hotels on the Waikiki side, but there is a Morimoto that we all know and love. 
And so then let's talk about Lanai. So what I love about pairing Oahu and Lanai together is because on Lanai, there are two Four Seasons. And part of when you are booking a Four Seasons property to go to Lanai, they also include the private plane that they will be able to take you from Oahu to Lanai. So the two things about Lanai, there is the Lanai Four Seasons, and then there's the Sensi. So the Four Seasons Lanai sits right on the water. It is great for couples, families. I would say it's good for families if for about two to three days, but it really is more of a tranquil private area for couples and wellness seekers. So families, young kids, that type of thing might not be the best for them. And what Lanai really does have to offer is it is a true secluded island. So you are going to be really staying in the property the majority of the time. So the Sensi Lanai actually sits up in the mountainside in the jungle, and it is a deal for wellness retreat seekers. What's wonderful about the Sensi Lanai is that it does have a partnership with Nobu Dining, and the food is spectacular, and the spa is absolutely amazing. Okay, so let's talk about Kauai a little bit. So Kauai is referred to as the Garden Island, and it is mostly covered by rainforest. So it is one of the geographically oldest islands. There is not a lot of infrastructure, I will say, in terms of giant resorts. So it is has a much more laid back down to earth vibe compared to all of the other islands that we just mentioned. Um, it is truly for nature lovers that are looking for, you know, white sand beaches, challenging nature hikes, stunning waterfalls. So like I said, what to do, what to see here, lots and lots of coastal trails, lots of state parks, lots of caves that you can go and explore. And the food is fantastic. There are so many variety of different cuisines as well as restaurants to go and explore. So we've listed out quite a few of them here for you today. So let's talk about the One Hotel. It is a new property that just recently opened this year. It sits in Princeville. It is fantastic, especially for those looking for a eco-chic, wellness-focused, luxury um, retreat stay, stunning beachfront access and settings, top-notch spa, programming as well that is fantastic, and a variety of different locally sourced dining options. It is great for couples. It is great for baby moons. It is great for honeymoons. Multi-generational families, probably not so much. We'll talk a little bit about other places for you there, but it is great for also solo travelers. The Grand Hyatt Kauai is fantastic for travelers seeking that balance between nostalgia as well as luxury. It is great, again, for romantic destinations, also really great for families wanting to vacation and relax around their gardens and their lagoons that they have. And they do have a variety of different dining options, fresh cocktails, spa treatments, all that kind of fun stuff. It is does have beachfront access as well. The Koakea Resort, this is a newer property in terms of build, but this is also another great place for tranquil and an intimate escape. Smaller in size, though, than the Grand Hyatt. So this is more for honeymooners or couples looking for romantic getaways. This is where you can go. They have really wonderful dining options. It sits there. You can see it kind of here. There is the beach on the right-hand side. Beautiful pool, sprawling, green grass, and all over the grounds. So let's talk about Maui. Maui is a very wonderful island is probably one been one of my favorite islands that I've continued to go to. It has become a lot more popular now thanks to White Lotus and you can expect a lot of different visitors and it doesn't mean that you can't have an amazing vacation. So I'll talk a little bit about the pro like the island itself. Paella, which is on the north side, if you go to the west, you have Kanapali and Lahaina and Kapalua. We'll talk about some properties there, but as we are all familiar with, there was the Lahaina fires that happened in 2023, which are still being rebuilt. So there is not a ton of tourism going on over there. Kapalua, though, does have properties that are open, but when you go to Lahaina, there are not a lot of restaurants and the town is a little bit closed off right now, just given the rebuild and the reconstruction that's going on for it. So the the island is open, but just as an FYI. We then also have the Wailea McKenna down on the south side of the island where Kihei is. And then on the far east side is Hana. So I'll talk a little bit about the road to Hana. It is a fun activity to do. If you've never done it, it is super, super cool. There's tons of waterfalls. The road to Hana is a very windy road of about, I think it takes like two-ish, three hours, depending on how fast you drive to get there. 
but it is a very fun experience and there's beautiful hiking to be done. There are a few properties out there as well that you can go to, one of them being a Hyatt that you can stay at. I highly encourage people to do that if they are really, really gung-ho and ambitious and that they can stay about one to two days there. So what to do, like I mentioned, Road to Hana, you also can go to the Black Sand Beach um, on the Waialea side. You can also go to Molokini, which is this image up here at the top. Molokini is a crater and it is great for snorkeling and scuba diving. And then you can also go to Haleakala and go hike the top of the mountain. Lots of places to eat and drink here. Mama's Fish House, which is personally one of my favorites. I love to land onto the island and then go straight there for lunch. Monkey Pod in Waialea is a fan favorite of mine as well. And then we have listed a couple of other ones here as you, for you. So I'm going to talk about Waialea first, and then we'll get into Kapalua. So Waialea is amazing because it has about four to five miles of long strip white beach. And what it does is there are a variety of different resorts. I can't talk about all of the resorts, but I will briefly touch on them. We have the Four Seasons, which we all know and love. It is great for multi-generational families. It has four different restaurants. You can spend all day at the pool if you would like. They also have a beach that they that guests have access to. Lots of young couples here, lots of families, and lots of Four Season loyalists. They have a variety of different room configurations too. It is quite an expansive property. So like I said, great for multi-generational families. The Fairmont Kehlani sits right next to the Four Seasons. It is a beautiful property, one of probably my favorites, and it has just gotten a remodel. It is great for honeymooners. It is great for families. It's great for retirees big resort, but actually feels quite intimate when you are there. And they have a variety of different room categories that help with all of the different types of travelers. And what's nice is, and this actually picture right here, this is an entry level room. So what's nice about this property is you can actually fit three people in here. So you have your king size bed, and then you have a little area where there is a pullout couch that you can have. So if you have young children, this is also a great entry level room category for people and they don't have to upgrade to suites. Now, as we talk about suites, there are suites and villas on um, the property. The villas are fantastic. Two bedroom villas that can hold up to six people. It has a full kitchen. It has a jacuzzi actually that's your own private. It has laundry. It has a grill. So they can actually organize food to come in so you can enjoy it and make it feel like you are in a condo, but you actually are on a resort. Um, the Andaz Maui actually sits on the right side of the Four Seasons. So the Fairmont Kehlani is on the left side of the Four Seasons at the very, very end of the strip of resorts, like I mentioned. It goes then Four Seasons, then it goes Andaz. So the Andaz is wonderful. I would say this is much more for a seasonal travelers, young couples looking for more of a modern, serene beachfront. There's about three different pools. Again, it also has beachfront access, so they do have a beach um, that you can access and lay out at more contemporary styled rooms, very zen-like, completed with like lava stone bathrooms, private lanai's, comfortable for like those days that you really just want to kind of relax and chill. They take their adults only pool very seriously, just FYI. And they also have three different restaurants. Before I get into the Kapalua, I know there's a couple of other um, hotels that I didn't mention on here because we would go over way too long, but there's also the Waldorf Astoria Grand Waialea. We also have the Hotel Waialea, which is a Marriott property that sits on the same strip. So there are a variety of other options for you. So as we enter into Kapalua Bay, the montage is fantastic. It is so wonderful, very sophisticated residential style suites, wonderful for family-friendly amenities, multi-generational families, like I said. It sits on this mountain, if you will, like this cliff. So to get down to the beach, you it's a bit of a walk, but you can also take a buggy down. Great for snorkeling, paddleboarding, guided hikes. It is a little bit more on the pricier side, but what's great about it is you do get a full amenity style experience with stunning views of the ocean. And their concierge team is fantastic and will really do all the nuts and bolts of planning your travel once you are there. And then we have the Ritz-Carlton Maui. The Ritz-Carlton is also great, lush surroundings. It has oceanfront views, but again, you have to kind of walk down to get to the beach. It has wonderful service. It is home to two championship golf courses. So if you do have big golfers, highly encourage people to stay here on this side of the island. And it is, the history includes a relocation due to the rediscovery of the ancient burial sites. Okay. I want to thank you all so much for joining. I hope this was super insightful and helpful. 
Thank you again. And we look forward to our next destination debrief with you.